Man, God laid something on my heart, and I just want to give this to you guys. Tell you what, just go ahead and sit down for just a moment if you can. If you can't, that's fine. I wrote some things down uh, Friday, Friday night, December the 14th. Things that happened in Newtown, Connecticut. What I think is sad is why does it take a tragedy to open our eyes? Why does it take a young man walking into an elementary school to get the church on its knees? Why? Why does it take somebody dying for us to feel sorry and repent when it should never have to take place? Why does it take a 9-11 for the, for the church houses to be filled up on a Sunday morning and two weeks later, it's back empty? Why? Someone asked me, they said, Brian, why did Newtown, Connecticut, why did innocent children die? Evil. It's not, listen to me, I, I know there's psychological problems, I understand, but the enemy behind that is Satan. I want y'all to listen, listen to me just for a moment. Evil. 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 We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against the higher powers and the principalities of the darkness. That person who walked into that school is not your enemy. That's why it's so important that you watch and you listen for your children. I'm going to say it again. You better watch what books that your kids read. You better watch what programs that they're watching on television. You better watch, you better watch what's going on in their life because there is an enemy and his name is Satan and he will consume them if we as parents don't stand up. It's the truth. Hey, hey, it's the truth. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's so good today. Because God, once again, youth, God, once again, adults, is doing what God does best, love people. If your child is playing an Xbox game that's blow me up, shoot me up, and tear me down, you better go into that room and dismiss that program from their hand because it's getting in their mind. I don't care who you are. It's getting in your mind. You say, Brian, it's never bothered me. You're not bigger than sin. In the flesh, you'll never beat sin. You better watch what books they read. If they're reading Harry Potter, I wrote it down. I don't care if you get mad at me or not. It's time for men of God and women of God to stand up behind the holy sacred desk and say, don't you do that. Don't you go there. You say, Brian, they're too little. That's what that six-year-old thought, too, when that man walked through that door. Don't ever think that we're above reproach. Don't ever think that it cannot happen in Campbellsville, Kentucky. Don't ever think that, it, that you're invincible and it can't happen to you, because it can. What I'm begging us to do today is this. Come back to the heart of worship. With a tragedy or with not a tragedy, I'm going to praise his name. I know who I am. I will, I will stand up for my church. I will stand up for my children. And whether you like me or not or put me on topics or whatever, baby, bring it on. It's the truth. It's the truth. So this morning, I'm going to do something different. You stand up. I want you to go find your parents. If your parents are not here, I want you to go to some adult in this congregation that you just admire and you lift up and you look up to them as a godly parent or a godly adult. Come on, it's all right. I don't care if we're already up on Baptist Church on a Sunday morning. Go find your parents. 
Come on, go find your parents. Hey, if you're in the room upstairs, come on down here. It's a church-wide event today. Twenty children, the age of six and seven, died Friday, December the 14th, along with the seven adults in the elementary school. And I felt the Lord impress on me, my God, we've got to get back to praying. We got to get back to praying. The average pastor, according to statistics, prays 15 minutes a day. But oh boy, we want the presence of God, but we don't search for it. So here's what I want us to do. I feel the Lord. Today, I want to put a hedge of protection around our babies, around our teachers. If you're a teacher in this congregation, I want you to stand this morning. If you're a, te a teacher in any school, I don't care if it's Green, I don't care if it's Casey, I don't care if it's Marion, watch this. I'm not about a school system, I'm about a people system. Care if you read, I don't care if you bleed green this morning, God bleeds red. You say, Brian, you're passionate about this, you're daggone right. Because I guarantee if I had a parent here today that they did not call their child's name, I guarantee they'd be preaching harder than I'm preaching today. But we as God's church and we as God's people, I'm throwing it out today. We've got to get back on our knees. I don't care if you're a deacon in this house. I don't care if you're a pastor in this house. You need to get on your knees today and need to pray. We need to pray. It should never take a tragedy, Gary, for you to be on your knees praying to God. Never. Never. So here's what I want us to do. Teachers, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for stepping in. And stepping up into the school system. Thank you. I heard about that 27-year-old teacher on the news that where she guarded her children, put them up against the wall as they was hearing the gunfire in the hallways and the kids were screaming. You say, Brian, is that real? That's as real as this pastor standing here this morning. But I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, we got to be ready. The Bible says stand firm and be ready when the enemy comes. Are y'all ready? Because watch this. He's trying to get in here right now. Some of you may have him in your minds, but you don't know officially where you're at right now. I'm telling you, we need to bind that old, that old devil this morning. So here's what I want us to do. This altar is open. This altar is open. And I'm begging you in the name of Jesus. Mama, Daddy, grab your kid. Stepdaddy, we're going to put the steps down today because why? You're a daddy no matter if you're a stepdaddy or not. You're still responsible for that child. Somebody say amen. Come on. This altar's open. I know it's Sunday. I know it's preaching time. But this is some good preaching right now. Don't miss it. Don't miss what God is doing in this house. You can stay in your seats if you want to. You can come to this altar if you want to. Listen to this. A 16-year-old girl in 2020, Saturday night, said these words. I wrote it down. She said, moms and dads, hug your children every day and tell them that you love them. Hug your kids. You say, Brian, I don't like them right now. They probably don't like you either. But it's not about what you like or dislike. You better learn to plead the blood of God over your family. Y'all better listen to this preacher this morning. I got a word from the Lord. You better learn to plead the blood of God over your children, over your church, over your circumstances. You better start saying, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So right now, moms, dads, you pray. Prayer warriors, just pray. Just pray and seek the Lord. Oh, Lord, bless them children. Come on. Come on, plead the blood of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, mama, pray for that daughter. Oh, hallelujah. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I plead the blood of God. I plead the blood of God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, just pray. Just seek you. You might say, Brian, I don't know what to pray. Just plead the blood of God over this nation, over this country, over our church, over our president, over, over our nation, over our Senate, our Congress. Oh, we need Jesus. We need the Lord. Oh, we need the Lord. Oh, we need you, Lord. Oh. We need you, Lord. 